Okay, we are going to be making yet another 12 volt power pack because I need another one to power some cabinet lighting, namely a 12 volt LED strip. And instead of going with the boost converters for my 3.7 lithium ion cells and the TP4056 charging module, we're going a different route this time. We're going to be using this. 12 volt UPS board. It's got everything on board. So we've got um, 5 volt charging via USB C, and at the output we have 12 volts. So this PCB does everything, and it's actually rated as a UPS because we can see we've got some capacitors here to handle the switchover. And it has a built in 18650 battery holder, and they are in 1S2P because you can see it's working already. They're in, they're in parallel, even with just one battery. So we're gonna be chucking this into this jiffy box here, and we're gonna be putting it in facing downward. We don't wanna be leaning on the PCB. So this is actually my second delivery of this because the first bunch that I ordered were just damaged. It wasn't packed very nicely. Capacitors fell off, some other chips fell off. So. Glad I finally have it. So we're going to simplify this installation with just this. Um, and we're going to use this extension for the charging module. So to solder the wires here for the 5 volt input. And yeah, and I've got some um, laptop battery cells. These are Samsung 2500 milliamp hours. Because my other ones were TMU quality, not very good. And they had the um, nipple on the end. So it didn't really fit nicely in here without, a, without some extra force. So I've got the flat top batteries. And being Samsung, uh, good, reputable quality. And I just picked this up at my local JCAR store for $14.95 each. And then on the output of the UPS board, we will have just a DC plug. So being a UPS board, basically I can have this charged and when the power goes out, the battery gets drained. But for my purposes, I'm just going to be using it as a, a charging module for some lights. It's primarily just going to be running off battery. Okay, I've put the cells in there and I used a multimeter to check which, which is the positive and the negative because they're not marked. And I've just used a Sharpie to, to mark those there so I don't ever put them in the wrong way. And now I've hooked up some power, and I don't know what these LEDs are, but they were at 3.56 volts, so they're going to need a charge. So this is probably charging. When it goes blue, possibly it means it's finished, but I'll let you know when we get to that point. In case I didn't point it out already, this is always going to charge from 5 volts, and I can solder here my own 5 volt power source and it's always going to be outputting 12 volts from this end. So they come in three variants, 12 volt, 9 volt, and 5 volts. So this is a 12 volt variant. So it's got a built-in boost converter. And I just solder on some leads there to get 12 volt output. So in theory, I could be plugging my power source in there and my output or load there. If I pull the power here, the 12 volt will still be active until the batteries are drained. Two hours later. It's been a few hours and the batteries are now charged because the blue light's on. So blue means charge, red means it's charging. And when I got these new 18650 Samsung batteries, they were about 3.56 volts. So yeah, fully charged. Day two. Okay, I'm back into completing this build. What I've done here is I've put a green LED on the buck converter for the 12 volt to 5 volt USB. In case I want to use this for a 5 volt project, it does have a small tiny red LED, but I want a green LED on it. It's got, I think this is about a 330 ohm resistor, so not too bright. So I know when this is turned on, there's a little 1 amp switch here, because this 
is always going to output 12 volts. So now I'm getting ready to put the DC plug onto these terminals here for the 12 volt out. And here's the Jiffy box where I'm going to start drilling holes. A few moments later. All right, I've drilled the holes now. I'm getting better with the Dremel, as you can see. Uh, USB for input, USB A for output, and that holes for the DC plug. So I'm going to start soldering the bits to the actual um, 12 volt all in one UPS board. And I'll loop you back in when I've done that. More moments later. Okay, the soldering is done. I have to join a bit of cable there, heat shrink, and no, that is not um, pierced. That is a bit of solder from when I uh, use the soldering iron to melt the heat shrink. And I changed um, the cable here for the DC plug because it was really too thick and I had trouble soldering it. Um, yeah, not the best, but not the worst. But I did manage to get it on with a few battle scars, but that should be all right. And it does work, because if I go get him, it turns on. All right, I'll put it in the case. Okay, it's in the box. It's a lot cleaner than I expected it to be, actually. Got a bit of... Um, 3M Velcro tape there to keep it to one side and I can pull it off if I need to change the batteries. Um, the USB buck converter is double-sided taped in. There we go. And I just need to put the 5521 plug uh, female end and yeah, cover it up, and she's right to go. One eternity later. Okay, we are complete. We are fully charged, as you can see by this LED here. And I've labelled every hole that I made for the LEDs. Uh, that's when the USB is turned on for 5 volt. Um, 12 volt, um, it's always going to be on, because this is how this UPS module works. Um, charging, as I said, that turns red when we are charging. Uh, there's the USB switch there. And on the side, we've got the 5 volts USB out and the USB C in for charging for the um, 12 volt UPS module. So I've got the label here 1S2P, uh, two cells in parallel. With in mind 5000 milliamp hour or 18.5 watt hours. You have a 5 volt USB and a 12 volt DC. And here it is. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration of it. For the 5 volt, there's the light. And we have the green LED showing that USB is on. And for the 12 volt out, we'll have a uh, 12 volt LED strip here. I'll plug that in. Okay, I've plugged the 12 volt LED strip. There it is. Now, if I unplug the power here, the LED strip should still run. There we go. Excellent. That is how the EPS board works. Now, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be using this for LED lighting in one of my dark cabinets. I'm not sure where it is yet, but there it is. It's completed, and I hope you enjoyed this build, and I'll catch you in the next video.